Even so, just six months after the Battle of Messines, feeding that appetite for TNT led to the biggest unplanned explosion of all time. The sea in this part of the world is everything. For Halifax, Nova Scotia, a deep water harbour on Canada's eastern seaboard, ships are the city's livelihood. But one ship in particular nearly spelled the death of Halifax, proving that where there are explosives, danger is never far away. The Halifax explosion is the largest prior to the atomic bombs. There's no explosion prior to 1945 that matches it. During the First World War, Halifax played a vital role in sending explosives and other war materials from North America to the Western Front. Many of the explosives used at Messines passed through here. Halifax Harbour approaches were always crowded with shipping. On December the 6th, 1917, on the French steamer Mont Blanc, a huge shipment of raw TNT and other explosives had been crammed aboard. Her skipper expected another routine Atlantic crossing. But then... Captain! Another steamer, the Emo, was approaching fast on a collision course. Mont Blanc was coming from the open ocean, proceeding up the harbour. Emo had been in the Bedford Basin at anchor, ready to go out to sea. A collision would be bad enough, but the Mont Blanc on the right was a giant floating bomb. Mont Blanc was loaded with 2.9 kilotons, that's 2,900 tonnes of explosives. Everything from picric acid used for making munitions to gun cotton to the new explosive, 200 tonnes of TNT. Even loaded stem to stern with explosives, Mont Blanc had survived the impact. How? The cocktail of explosives that were on board the Mont Blanc may seem quite horrendous to the layman. However, explosives need to be insensitive, otherwise you can't transport them around. And if you can't transport them around, you can't use them. What does happen when high explosive TNT, exactly the same as on Mont Blanc, is subjected to massive impact? In this experiment, we'll find out. This is half a kilogram of TNT, enough to demolish a house. The Mont Blanc was specially designed as an explosives carrier. Her hold was lined with wood to prevent sparks. We'll also avoid direct contact with the metal weight. The weight is more than 400 pounds. It'll be released by a small explosive charge, cutting the rope. Dropped from a height of 10 metres, the weight will strike with a crushing force of 6,000 tonnes. A tiny remote camera will capture the moment of impact, if it survives. Firing now! The weight crashes down, but the TNT is just turned to dust. It's reacted exactly as it was designed to do. You have primary high explosives, which are very easy to set off, and secondaries, which are difficult. TNT is a secondary high explosive. You can drop a considerable weight onto it and it still won't go off. The reason you want to have secondary high explosives is that you don't want an explosive that goes off by accident when you don't want it to. Just like on that morning at Halifax, Mont Blanc survived the impact, but a tragic chain of events had begun. The Mont Blanc, unfortunately, did not blow up. She drifted. Above the TNT, 30 tonnes of benzol, similar to petrol. Sparks had showered from the grinding metal of Mont Blanc's torn hull. The fire raged in the benzol, and eventually the heat got down into the cargo. The crew of Mont Blanc knew what was coming. The only question, when? They raced to abandon the blazing ship leaving her to drift across the harbour towards Halifax City. That 15-minute delay made it particularly tragic for the population in Halifax. 
But you can imagine, with the ship burning in the harbor, everyone in Halifax lined the hill, stood there, stopped and watched. The blazing vessel was drifting to precisely where she'd do the most damage. But with the fire on board now an inferno, why didn't she explode? Another experiment will provide the answer. We'll create a fierce blaze using kerosene as the fuel. And here's another half kilo of raw TNT, like the 200 tonnes on board Mont Blanc. This time, the TNT is about to be cooked. For safety reasons, a remote detonator will ignite the fire. Firing. Now. But will the heat of the fire set off the explosive? After three minutes, it's an inferno. But you can see the TNT, one of the most powerful of modern explosives, simply burning. TNT, like other secondary explosives, requires a very heavy shock wave in order to set it off. You need a detonator, which gives it a really hard smack. When it's put in a fire, there's no shock wave produced, so it will not go off. The thousands of tonnes of raw explosives en Mont Blanc might just have burnt out harmlessly like this. There might have been no disaster, but for a final and fatal piece of the jigsaw. The Mont Blanc had been blazing for 15 minutes. She was now right alongside the crowded shoreline of Halifax Harbour, and her cargo included a quantity of artillery shells. The detonators inside the shells were exactly what was needed to trigger the raw TNT. It's easy to imagine the excitement in the crowds there watching, with no idea of the danger they were in. Only people that have experienced something like the Blitz can have any concept of how absolute the destruction was. That explosion wave swept up the hill and totally obliterated every house, every family that was there. The blast wave shattered the houses. And then there was also a tsunami or a tidal wave. Perhaps as many as 200 people were drowned, but we don't know what caused the death of many people. We just had too many bodies to do autopsies. The death toll, around 2,000, is still only an estimate. It was not possible to identify everyone. Some of the bodies were simply a bundle of incinerated bones. It wasn't even possible to know if it was one body or two. Some were left headless. One body was found 18 months later in the ruins of a building. The crew of Mont Blanc did survive. They'd rowed to shore and laid flat down in a belt of trees. But of their ship, nothing was left except this section of anchor weighing half a tonne, thrown two miles south, and this heavy gun tossed three miles through the air in the other direction. They are a reminder of the astonishing forces unleashed that day. And the significance of this disaster wasn't lost on generals and scientists who, come the next war, pondered how to destroy whole cities. Not by accident, but by design.